Now this is where things start to get a little bit violent, so I'll kind of step back when I run this thing. There we go. Come on, hold up, hold up. Ah. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about some Formlabs resin. Let's talk about that. So Formlabs is mostly known for dental or higher end 3D printing, a brand we generally don't see in the general consumer home. However, with that in mind, Formlabs has come out with this Crater Tough resin designed specifically for 405 nanometer printing, which puts it right into the desktop area. And about 24 to $25 a bottle, I think it's worth checking out. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. I'm gonna test the Formlabs Creator Tough resin against some standard ABS resin. This right here is my own blend. This blend right here is a mixture of three different resins, which I'm not gonna disclose. I don't give everything away for free. But one of those being the primary ingredient is actually another kind of tough resin. So it's a, it's a good comparison. The other blends in here is one of them is to give me a particular color that I'm after. The other one is to give it a, a little bit more accuracy. So it's not gonna be quite as tough as the original ingredient because I'm going for some color and accuracy a little bit more than I'm going just for durability or flexibility. So we're gonna see how much it compares against this. Now, this blend right here, when I'm all said and done, it's gonna cost me about $45 a bottle is about what I pay to make this. Where this one, is almost half that at the 24 to 25 dollars. So let's see kind of how they compare using my massive machine right here. We're going to crunch and stretch and, you know, abuse these resins quite a bit and we'll see which one is the victor. And the first thing I want to talk about is the bottle. The bottle's really awesome. When you unscrew it, it's got this red little ring right here that will fall down and that way you know if the bottle's been opened or not by whether or not this red ring is visible. Pretty nice to know which, you know, if you've got a bunch on the shelves. The next thing that's really, really great about it is there's this little bump in the bottom in the cap. And that bump is designed to go inside of the bottle and kind of seal it when the lid's on. Now this is great so when you're shaking your bottle, uh, resin doesn't get all over the cap. And then when you put the cap back on, down the threads and make a really messy bottle. I'm sure if anyone who's been 3D printing at all knows exactly what I'm talking about and how annoying that can be. The next thing that's really nice is here on the top, the very last thread, it's not really part of the thread, but you know, you could call it that one. It comes to a really sharp angle. I've noticed this allows the resin to drip off really, really easy. So it doesn't like when, you, when you're pouring it and you're done, it doesn't come back on the threads. Again, just keeping the bottle really, really nice and safe and clean. The next thing about this resin is that it's ACMO free or ACMO free. I don't know, I think it's probably ACMO. Let me know in the comments whether I got that right or not. Now what this does is this makes this resin slightly safer to handle and to have around you when you're using it. That chemical is quite dangerous and it's found in most of our resins. However, there's a bit of a trade-off with that. The ACMO chemical makes resin cure much, much faster and gives it a pretty good durability. So it being free means this resin takes a long time to cure. In fact, I calibrated this on three different machines just to kind of get an idea of the UV exposure time. And the three different machines I calibrated on are actually some of my most powerful machines, meaning the UV light is the strongest. That being the M7 Pro, the Saturn III Ultra, and the Mini 8KS. I kind of wanted to get one of each brand in there. The Mini 8KS at 30 micrometers took six seconds per layer. The Anycubic M7 Pro at 50 UM or 50 micrometers took seven seconds per layer and the Saturn III Ultra took eight seconds per layer also at 50 UM or 50 micrometers. And while I was calibrating this resin, I took the opportunity to run a little bit of an extra test. Here's boxes of calibration with the exact same light off delay and exposure time as this one. Both seven seconds, both using a very long light off delay. And the difference is, is these boxes measure uh, quite a bit bigger than these ones do, and they don't even fit together. In fact, they measure quite a bit larger. Now here's the difference. The difference between these two prints is speed, the lift speed and the retract speed. This one's using TSMC, and I'm going really, really slow at start and then faster. This one's using no TSMC, so it's just a single speed up and down quite quick. And the difference is dramatic. And I did a repeat of this on the Saturn III Ultra and I got very similar results. The ones with the fast speeds, the boxes don't fit and they measure quite a bit bigger. And the ones with the slower speeds using TSMC, everything fits just fine. Now this is true for almost all resins, but a really thick and viscous resin like this one, the basically it's amplified the issues. So just one thing to keep in mind with this one is you might wanna be printing a little bit slow with a lot of light off delay, or you might have a hard time calibrating it or getting anything that's really dimensionally accurate. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that right here on the back of the bottle, it says this resin likes to print at either 18 degrees Celsius at the lowest or 28 degrees Celsius at the highest. All three printers I used for this have heaters in them and I kept the heat at 28 degrees Celsius as recommended by the bottle. Another thing I really like is on the back of the bottle, they have the post curing instructions. It says to clean for 10 minutes. I cleaned it for a little bit longer than 10 minutes. Your cure time is 10 minutes. I cured at 10 minutes, uh, five minutes per side and I heated the resins up to 40 degrees Celsius. Uh, during and before the curing. The shelf life is 24 months, which is average. Uh, use it within 24 months to get the best results. And I almost forgot to mention that I'll be posting the resin profile settings of everything I printed here in the description below. That way, if you've got the same three printers that I used or similar printers, you can just copy those settings, print boxes of calibration just to fine tune them, and then you'll be good to go. And just because I have some extra eggs from Easter, I decided to print this little egg drop test using this Formlabs resin. Honestly, I don't think it's gonna survive it, but we'll give it a shot and see how much of a mess we make just to have a little bit of fun. Let's get a splash shield for that. I don't care if it goes this way. I do care a lot if it goes that way. Got my blast shield here. So let's see what happens. Let's do about a foot, nothing scientific. Uh, it survived. Okay, let's do a little higher. Oh. It didn't survive that one. <laughs> but hey, it survived the first one and the resin didn't break, only the egg broke. So there's that. It is a flexible uh, resin. So let's see here, let's see how much I can make this flex. Squish the egg, but the part itself actually is doing just fine. So yeah, the resin is more flexible than the egg. Just clean up some of that egg before the next kit and let's get going. Now let's talk about how this resin is to print minis or bigger models, but I also have my egg test here without the egg in it and it still balances just fine without breaking. I've actually been doing this quite a bit, so uh, off camera, it, it balances pretty well. This stuff is pretty strong, but for minis, well, that's where things are a little bit different. So I would say overall the quality, um, the detail of the minis is suffering a little bit uh, in trade for that kind of bouncy and toughness. I've definitely found that the kind of the more tough, the more bouncy your resin is, the more flexible, the less detail. And with these minis, you can kind of see some of that. Now, how was it to use this? Well, removing supports was a bit difficult. It's very, very strong. And so the supports were pretty hard to remove. My recommendation is if you're gonna use this resin, you're gonna to wanna to make your support tips pretty small and you're not gonna need as many of them. That's kind of a, one of the pros, I guess. If you're printing pre-supported minis like these ones from Miniature Madness off the Lychee Library, they came pre-supported and they were a little bit hard to remove with the size of the supports that were used on them. However, one of the advantages of this stuff is I'm not worried it's gonna break. Just throwing this down on the ground, it's not gonna break. So yeah, the durability is really fantastic. And to show a bigger model, I've got this Frog Knight here from Kios Mansions off the Lychee Library. He's also got this Chihuahua thing, which is just kind of adorable and ugly at the same time. In the end, I went with the Frog Knight, but either one I think are really awesome. Go check him out on the Lychee Library. Now, as far as this resins is concerned, this isn't gonna break. If I were to ship this somewhere um, and you know, I'd be worried about it breaking on the way, with this particular resin, I absolutely would not. It's got these really thin little, uh, well not little, they're actually pretty good size. These, uh, I don't know, cape, I guess. And I'm not worried at all about this cape breaking. I would drop it a few times and I just, I don't care. I wouldn't do this with any other resin. That didn't fall off, that's his little backpack. This isn't glued together, by the way. It's just press fit. The whole thing is just press fit. I, there's no glue or anything. This is a very durable resin and the detail on this guy is actually pretty dang good. I did have to sand it a little bit more. I think with with larger models, you know, with a bigger cross section, especially with that really long exposure time and that more viscous uh, texture, it does make it so that keys swell a little bit more than other resins I've used. So I did have to end up sanding this down just a little bit. And it really wasn't so much sanding with this resin as it feels more like an ingestic molded, injection molded plastic and less of uh, like the regular ABS stuff. So what I ended up doing is actually just grabbing a little like carving thing and carving it off in little layers. That went really, really fast and I was done really quick. And after all that, the thing goes together great, looks great and incredibly durable. And with that, we're finally gonna get to the brake tests. Now I've gone through and separated these out and I've given them their final cure on each side just to make sure everything is cured evenly. And there's gonna be a total of three different types of tests. There's going to be the flat bend test, the round bend test where it's round, and then the tensile strength test. I'm gonna do each test three times and I'm gonna do each test uh, fast and slow. So there's gonna be a lot of tests. So let's go through and start breaking this resin and then I'm gonna post the results at the end. And you know, as always safety first or safety last or something. So put on my safety gear because when these things break, they, they can shoot. Probably a full face shield would be smarter with maybe this resin, 
but we'll find out if I get any uh, nicks or scratches or something. So we're gonna start with my own blend. Let's put this into the little tensile strength test right here. Now, one thing that's important is I have to make sure on every single test that the test is flat um, and it's not rotated at all. That's important. And of course, I've got this machine set up so that it's going to do uh, one pound, one foot pound uh, before the test begins. And that's true on all of the tests. So whether it's bending it or it's doing a tensile strength, it's not gonna kick in and start measuring anything to one pound. And I'm just doing that to make sure that I get like a consistent data across the board. All right, and here goes the very first test of tensile strength. And we're gonna do the slow test first and then the fast tests. There we go, that's the very first test. Decent amount of travel before it broke. 105 pounds. Now I'll be doing three tests of each one and then I'm just gonna average out the results. I'm just doing three so that I don't end up with some weird numbers at the end. Now we're gonna run three tests of the form labs with the exact same settings. And we should know pretty quick about how these two are gonna bounce out with this very first test. So let's give it a go. Definitely more elongation. It hasn't broken yet, there we go. 97.2, so very similar on the force required to break it. Here we go on our second test. Ooh, 97.8, very similar. Last one on the slow tensile strength test. 101.9, very, very similar on how much force it's required. And of course, I'll know at the end, the distance, the difference between the distance traveled before it broke or the elongation at break. Now we're gonna do the tensile strength, but at a fast speed. So they're gonna break much, much quicker and should potentially have less movement before they break. Now let's find out. Now that took 123.9. Yeah, 123.9. So that's, that's kind of interesting something to keep in mind as this translates to resin 3D printing. So when we move very fast, uh, we release it very quickly, but a much higher peak of pill force. And there's also gonna be less movement. So we're going to break it quicker and a lot more force. Remember these ones broke at under 100 or close to 100. This one broke at almost 25% more force just because we increased the speed. So keep that in mind because that same principle applies to 3D printing. And it goes back to why some of these boxes, when I just increased the speed, stopped working when slower speeds, the same UV exposure time, the same loft delay, printed beautifully. So something to keep in mind. 121, very similar. 126. 122. All right, now I gotta switch out the tensile strength for the compression test. So let me do that and then we'll get testing some more. And then we're gonna start with the flat bend test. Uh, again, slow and then fast. So now we get to see if my own blend is very flexible. Uh, I've actually never tested it before, so I have no idea. So far I'd say it's doing actually better than I expected. And there we go, it broke. It broke at 53 foot pounds. So let's do it three more times and we'll average the data. Form labs. And remember it's gonna put one pound of force on it before the test begins just to kind of try to average everything out. I think it's gonna survive the bend test. I think the bench is going to pop open before it breaks. And there we go, yep, the bench popped open before it snapped. So there we go, we've got a failure to break, which is, which is great. Let's do it again. And again, another failure to break. I I'm, I'm bet it's gonna be three for three on this one. I actually wonder if on the slow speed we break any of the Formlabs resin. We'll find out. There we go, three for three. The Formlabs resin did not break in the uh, bend test. Now let's go to a fast speed for the bend test. Now this is where things start to get a little bit violent, so I'll kind of step back when I run this thing. There we go. 63 foot pounds on that one. Let's do it two more times and average out the results. Now that we're gonna see how much force this, this shoots off with. This is where I might actually put a dent in my wall or my face, we'll find out. All right, we're doing it fast. Let's see how much force this guy has. Huh, not too bad. It definitely broke though. At 65.8 uh, pounds to break it though. Let's do it two more times and average out the results. Oh, and we get a non-break on the fast test. That's impressive, that, that might actually be a first. One more time, let's see if we can get another non-fail. That would be really awesome if we got two out of three. 
It broke, but it bent quite a bit before it broke. And it broke at 65 pounds, so there we go. All right, round bend test slow. Let's see what it does. This is definitely gonna break. These are like more little needle projectiles when they break. 33 pounds, all right, let's go again. 32. 37.1, quite a bit of force on that one. Let's now go to the form labs. Oop, it broke. But it took 40 pounds to do it, so that's still pretty impressive. Oop. And we got a non-break on the round test as well. So we're stacking those up pretty good. One more. And there we go, we got two non-breaks on the slow round test. So let's now do the fast test on the final six and then we're done, then we can look at the results. Come on, hold up, hold up. Ah, 55.7, that's, that's actually pretty impressive. Ooh, and we got a non-break on the last one and it applied 51.1 pounds of force before it, basically the test designed to give up before it, it breaks, so. Yeah, non-break on the fast round test. So overall, we've got 100% uh, breaks on uh, my own blend using one part of an engineering resin. And on this one, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that didn't break. So now let's crunch the numbers and just kind of see about the distances that all of these kind of traveled before they broke. All right, I've broken all the tests and now it's time to look at the data. But first, I wanna ask if you could please like and subscribe this channel. Share it with anyone who you think might enjoy it. It really does help out a lot for me to continue making videos like this for you. All right, and let's look at the data. On the tensile strength, they're actually pretty similar. Really, we're within margin of error between these two. So really, those two, these two resins, as far as tensile strength is concerned, actually perform pretty similarly which is makes sense. Like I said, I did use an engineering grade in this one as the base. Uh, yeah, they're both tough resin, so that makes sense on the tensile strength, they would be very similar. Now, they really start to get different when we talk about the bending. So in the bending test for the flat one, the form labs kicks butt. Uh, and if we remember that some of these didn't even break right here, we've actually got three of them that didn't even break on the slow, and one of them that didn't break on the fast. So it's, it's even more so. I mean, not only do the numbers just kick its butt, but they didn't even break. Uh, and on the flat test, when we're going fast, same thing, it, it it won by quite a bit more, especially, you know, what we're really paying attention to is the distance. And again, we had one of them that didn't break on the fast, I believe, yeah, one of them that didn't break. On the round, same thing, the round really, really, there's a big gap between these two right here on the slow. Um, yeah, 10 millimeters versus five, that's double the distance and, and extra force as well. And on the round test fast, same thing, um, way more than double the distance and quite a bit more force as well. And on those ones, again, we had a total of three that didn't break, one of them on the fast, two of them on the slow, which is why that distance is so much more because it just kept going and there's not even a failure there. So uh, according to this one, the Form Labs Tough got nine out of 12 and my own blend got three out of 12. So, all right, I would say at this point, the only drawbacks of this resin are gonna be, it's not definitely not the most accurate resin out there and that really long cure time. But in every other category, price, uh, durability, flexibility, uh, printability, it's really, really good. Um, better than I honestly thought it was going to be. So I'm actually quite surprised at Form Labs introduction into the 405 nanometer or the desktop 3D printers. But that's just my opinion and I'm just one person. So let me know your opinion in the comments down below. Is this a resin that you'd like to try out on your own, especially considering the price and its durability? Or if there's other resins you'd like me to test this big resin cruncher out on, also let me know in the comments down below or you can reach out to us on the Light G Slicer Discord if you haven't joined that yet. And again, always remember, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and this video, share it with your friends, and thank you for watching, and have a good day.